have you ever picked up your camera and you weren't sure how to change the ca the settings that you really wanted to get the look you wanted? Well, you're going to want to stay tuned for this video, which is the basic video camera settings for beginners. <laughs> The exposure triangle. It consists of three things. It is aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. You know how to work with those three things and control the light in the camera? Then you've got the basic camera settings for video. So aperture is on the left side of the triangle and aperture is what is how much light is being let into the camera just like your eye. You're outside, then your eyes are going to constrict, the pupils are going to constrict so as to not let as much light in. You're inside, the pupils are going to be wider open. The aperture is actually the mechanical blades inside your camera that move, um, but aperture does a lot more than just let the light in. And what it does, it also controls depth of field. So depth of field, what is it? I write, to give you an example, right now I'm shooting at a 5.3 f-stop, which is considered to be a shallow depth of field. Now if you want to increase your f-stop, say to like an f16, f over 16, then that is going to be a deeper depth of field. So if you're shooting at an f16, you're going to let less light into the camera. It's going to be very constricted. And you're going to be very constricted. And you're going to have a deeper depth of field. And this is great for, say, landscape, because you want to capture more. So you want to use a higher f-stop than f16 going to let less light into the camera, but you're going to capture more of your scene. An aperture has a huge impact on the look and what you're trying to accomplish with your settings. Now, a word of caution about f-stops and what they mean, and I know at first I was getting these confused. So an f over 2, you would think, wow, that's a smaller number, right? Well, what f over 2 means, it's going to let more light in. It's a shallow depth of field. For instance, again, I'm shooting on an f over 5, 5.3, so I have a shallow depth of field. So if you're still a little confused uh, about what the numbers mean for f16 or f over 5.3, um, check out the video that I've done previously on what the numbers mean on your lens. I'll put a link to the description below. So, so let's say you were messing around with your depth of field. Well, if you're not getting enough light into the camera, or if you have too much light, then you want to look at your shutter speed. So shutter speed is exactly what it sounds like. It controls how fast the shutter moves to expose, in this case, used to expose film, um, now it is exposing, letting how much light and exposing, if you will, your camera sensor. So one thing to remember about shutter speed is the higher the shutter speed, it's going to capture more of the motion. Say you're shooting a fight scene. So it's going to capture more of the motion, but it also can seem like staccato or jumpy. So a slower shutter speed, like say a 1 over 24, is going to have very fluid movement in your video, but it can also, in some cases, cause motion blur, unless your subjects are kept very still. Want to know how to calculate shutter speed? It's real easy. You multiply your frame rate by 2. How easy is that? And I need to give you an idea. I'm shooting right now at 24 frames per second. So my shutter speed is twice that. But there's a caveat. 
my camera, and some cameras don't have a shutter speed of 1 over 50. For instance, or excuse me, most cameras, a lot of cameras don't have a shutter speed of 1 over 48 in this case. So we use the closest one, and I'm using 1 over 50. And the reason for this is so that the motion seems more natural. Again, in our fight scene example I gave, if you want to capture more of the action, then you want to dial up the shutter speed. So go ahead and crank up that shutter speed and get the look that you want for that fight scene. But if you do that, if you dial up your shutter speed, there's less light that's going to be hitting your camera sensor because the shutter is going to be moving so fast. So in that case, you are going to have to change your ISO. The ISO rule is if you're shooting in lower light, then you need to crank up the ISO. I'm shooting by a window right now, so my ISO is set for 400. ISO has a downside. The more you crank up the ISO on your camera to get more of that self-generating light, the more grain or noise, as it's called, is going to be introduced into your video. So you want to keep that in mind. One of the best things to do if rather than cranking up the ISO as high as it can go, is try and wait for better light or use you know lighting around you. Did you know though that there's actually a fourth side to the triangle? We can't forget frame rate, right? We're shooting video. This is all related, so if you increase your frame rate to get, again, action sports, you're shooting sports, then remember that your shutter speed is going to have to increase. And remember, each time that you increase your shutter speed, you're letting less light in to hit that camera sensor. So you're going to have to bump up either your ISO or your lighting setup is going to have to change in order to compensate for it. Question for you, which one of the three, now four, settings on the exposure triangle, whether it's aperture, ISO, shutter speed, or frame rate, gives you the most trouble or gives you the most headache? Drop in the comments below. This video is part of a playlist called the Digital Camera Tutorials for Beginners. So be sure you check that out. Uh, I have like a video on how to buy your first camera and what kind of SD card you're going to need. And as I mentioned earlier, the lens, what do the numbers mean on the lens? So check that out below. Check the playlist below. The link is in the description. And if you've got some value out of this video, be sure you give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one. Diggy Habanero, signing out.